Hey, onda, my fans of cinema. This is Jaime in Fuego for In Fuego Tainment, and you knew who I got with me, right? Cecil Lair, back again. Damn Rizzle, man. I am so stoked to be talking about Terminator. Genesis, Genesis, I don't know how the hell you're properly supposed to pronounce Pretty that. Pretty sure it's Genesis. Yeah, Sega Genesis, <laughs> who the hell knows. It's all wrong. John sent me here to save you. From the Terminator that was sent back to kill me, I know, but we already took care of him. We? I've been waiting for you. This is one that I actually did not get to see with my co-host here. Mm -hmm. I went and saw it with my pops because I've seen the last two Terminators with him and it was one of those nostalgia type things. You saw the so, last two Terminators with him? And I did. And that's what one, so you saw the two bad ones with the him. The two terrible <laughs> ones. Well, you know what, I think Rise of the Machines was a little, uh, you know, hated on more so than I thought was necessary. I know yeah. people have mixed feelings about it. Some prefer <laughs> Salvation, which I can't even fathom. <laughs> that film was terrible and almost killed the franchise, right? It did. Well, they were supposed to do three set in that sort of story space and then after the dismal performance they're like no thank you uh -uh, not happening nope, nope. so I don't know if that was Christian Bale going psycho behind the scenes or probably, that probably didn't, didn't have anything probably to do didn't with help it, <laughs> bad press for the film in some aspects so yeah this is them basically rebooting Terminator mm -hmm. and thankfully bringing back Arnold which was supposed to be the saving grace for the film and well I guess we can get to that with the bueno the malo and the feo mm -hmm. this is um, Alan Taylor I believe who had previously done some work on uh, what he did uh, Game of Thrones he did Thor the Dark World, and so this is um, him trying to resuscitate a dead franchise, mm -hmm. and well, the bueno was the fact that it looked cool, right? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> well, so I'm getting the feeling that you didn't like it quite as much as I did. I enjoyed it, but I was disappointed in a lot of stuff. But the, the good, the bueno, that's how, you know, we do the bueno, right. the malo, and the feo here on Infuegotainment. Bueno was obviously the fact that we got Arnie back, you mm -hmm. know? He was mm -hmm. digitized in Salvation and looked kind of kind of silly but well, he, he was digitized actually, in this one too they just made bit. it look a lot better yeah well and, you know uh, well, technology it, upgrading thankfully. yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so that was helpful but you know I think his his performance at least for me was the saving grace of the film you could tell he was having a lot of fun smiling all goofy mm -hmm. um, you know and kind of saving a script that I felt was a little convoluted and lacking at times convoluted and just flat-out confusing at points because yeah. and, and not only that but um, well, well, we'll get into that maybe in, in sort of the Malo. So what yeah. else did you like besides just the pretty pictures? I was really trying to um, go in with the, with some, some positivity, you know, with like an open mind and all that stuff, despite it being another PG-13 Terminator film, which, mm -hmm. um, you know, it wasn't quite as bad as, as Salvation as far as like toning down the gore. And, you know, I, I guess it was cool some of the Bueno maybe to see those little nods to the original film with, you know, running through the department store. Oh, and, some of the I nods. Mean, I mean, there was, there was the, tons the, of them, the right? opening scene directly lifted from Terminator 1. Yeah. Um, yeah awesome. With, the, with, with new the actors and the, guy and and the punks. No, and I mean yeah. the punks. That was oh, literally yeah. from the first movie with Bill, um, that was Bill, Bill Paxton, Paxton that was got killed in that punk. part. Yeah. But, uh, but so that was cool. And the then, only F-bomb dropped in the movie. Was yeah, during well, that naturally. Because yeah, you only uh, have one in a PG-13 film, so. The, the other, uh, there was a couple of other neat little drops too um, that, uh, that, Dyson's son was mm -hmm. uh, was uh, running the company now when they when they move forward through the story and that was really cool because we all got to see um, little boy Dyson in part two so yeah. to bring him back like there was a lot of a, a lot of my enjoyment for this movie and I'll just flat out admit it was just my love uh, of the nostalgia of the first two movies totally and they literally went there like okay they they had that opening scene from part one they had the the scene the the department store scene also from part one although yeah. it was changed the bad guy was now the bad guy from part two exactly so we had the T one thousand appear there but um, outside of all those nods the movie sort of moves past them at about the thirty minute mark and tries to branch out and become its own kind its of own thing book, yeah. within its own convoluted tiny whiny stuff which. Yeah is hard for them to do when it's already so convoluted. Truthfully, and I mean, so yeah, Bueno for me, I guess, is positive concept, like cool idea about rebooting the franchise, alternate timelines, it worked really well with X-Men Days of Future Past, and mm -hmm. I, I felt like it just kind of lost itself a little bit there, but you know, Arnold was awesome, that was a Bueno for me, story idea, awesome, but to segue into uh, the Malo, at least, you know, kind of jumping right off the bat because there were some things that bugged me, mm -hmm. hence the, the convolution. Um, some things not being explained very well and also something we talked about just before we started this filming, a big reveal 
that happened in the trailer that definitely should not have. Yeah, it was, even the director said, well, I, you know, I shot that with the intention of no one seeing it. And then it was a, so there's supposed to be a big turn in the middle of the movie, which is any good movie, the midpoint has a turn. And this was supposed to be it, but we were already expecting it. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, there it is. And it actually was a cool turn. That turn mm -hmm. would have been a bueno thing for me, but mm -hmm. it ends up on the Malo camp for the sheer fact that, hey, you let the cat out of the hat way too early. And yeah. the biggest reveal of the film, you know, the big twist was, you know, already there. Yeah, so. exactly. And so I, I don't know that we should necessarily state what it was just nope. in case you haven't seen I'm the trailer. I'm not going to, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it was, it was disappointing to have that uh, outed so early. Although, um, well, let, let me also say that um, something Malo for me was the scripting at parts was rough. Um, I'm going to talk about two different aspects of Malo here. Okay, the first was the scripting in that there were two jokes that they played over and over again and they really didn't land even one time. Maybe the first time you could call it, he mentioned the smiles, that was sort of a running gag and it's like, okay, well we saw that gag in part two, we can't run that gag four more times throughout this movie and they hope people are going to like it. Being and, a redheaded dead horse over it. Yeah, and, and, then, that. and then the there was one other one which I, I won't ruin but it has to do with a word that keeps getting repeated um, that, that Okay, well, I'll just say it theoretically. Okay. The theoretically joke. It, I hate when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> it got, oh, it got run into the ground, and it's like, that's not funny, guys. It's just not funny. And then, um, segueing based on what you just said, I was not a huge fan of um, Kyle Reese in this one. Oh, I just hated the fact that I almost felt they recast both. all of these iconic characters with crappier actors. Yeah, both him you and know? the actor that played John Connor left a lot to be desired for me. Um, I will from say, Game of Thrones. Was yeah, bad. Amelia Clark was good as Sarah yeah. Connor. She had that intensity. Mm -hmm. um, she had she was the Sarah Connor from T2 in the position of T1, so yeah. it was a little weird. Um, but she had that intensity, and Arnold was a saving grace too. But yeah, John Connor and Kyle Reese were just sort of they fell flat. Man. Yeah, they were just they were just delivering lines and not. I just didn't care, and it, yeah, it was it was sad because I cared so much about the characters in the past movies, especially one and two. Yeah, and to just and, have and, that. And you actually did care about the connection between Pops and Sarah Connor. Yeah, they, yeah. they had good chemistry. It was a that father was figure, which things, was yeah. different than than in you know in the past. So that was really neat. Yeah. Although one big Malo that just really ticked me off was no explanation as to who sent him back. No, oh, that's been erased from my program. Yeah, and I was just like, you're kidding me, right? I thought it was. I thought for sure it would be something that was revealed at the end, yeah, leading into a sequel. But no, no, the the end was was the end and um, the, even the ending was really predictable like um, that's another model I can mention is as they're heading into what's gonna be the final confrontation Arnold throws away a line that gives away what's gonna that, that gives away what's gonna happen I'm like oh so so something this is this is obviously gonna happen by the end of this confrontation and boom I was right and, and it's how like, many confrontations have we seen at the Skynet Cyberdyne headquarters you know mm -hmm. shootouts I think two three like I well mean, I, man, li I liked it I liked it in so much as it was was at least farther along like they had they had the poly alloy being created and they had the time machine and they had um, the you know a bunch of other stuff so at least it was a more interesting version sure. of Cyberdyne or yeah. Genesis and it all it looked is. good mm -hmm. you know which I guess would be back back to the uh, bueno from beforehand but another model that I have to just jump in with real quick I felt like certain characters were underutilized namely JK Simmons he was a throwaway. What was he yeah. even doing there? You know, and he's a great actor that was just poorly utilized. Even then, even uh, Matthew Smith. Matt yeah, Smith the guy was, from uh, Doctor Who. Doctor he was Who. like he was. I where swear, was he I had no movie? idea he was in the movie at yeah. all. And we were watching it, and and you see the first time you see him, it's it's as another character is just walking by, and he's just in the back. I was like, hey, I, I leaned over to the guy I saw the movie with. I was like, hey, this. Doctor Who? Why is he you in this? You would think they give him more screen time. Right? Yeah, and I was like, wow, okay. And then, and then, you know, the movie progressed, and I was like, oh, that's why I noticed him because he does have sort of a bigger role to play. Um, but and there's a little again, bit of him near the end of the film, but you yeah, know, no, yeah. well, at the near the end, and yeah. and you know, um, something else. Yeah, something else. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, once again, missed opportunities. This is a film that had a lot of potential, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It could have been so much better. Which really is going to finally segue for us into the Theo and the ugly of this film. We were reviewing this after the box office numbers have come out, Oof. and they were abysmal. Yeah, no, they did not. 
did not uh, do well. I mean, it, it's it's a shame, but you know, and, it and finished it's, third behind the dinosaurs who have ruled the box office for like four weeks now, which mm -hmm. I think we're still in consensus our favorite film of the summer so, so far. far. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, just in uh, enjoyment alone. I mean, again, I enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed Terminator. But it just, it was, I wouldn't give it more than like a C plus. It's yeah. not some, I'll, I'll watch Two it half, once. three stars maybe. Yeah, I'll watch it know? once when it comes out on DVD and then I'll shelve yeah. it the way I did T3 and, and, and Salvation most yeah. likely. If you're a fan of the franchise, it's a, you, you have to see it. You have to yeah. make up your own mind about it. Yeah, definitely do. But, and, and honestly, I would say it's worth seeing it in the theater just because it is so big and action filled and there's stuff flying all over the place. And, and the set pieces are cool. I feel yeah. kind of bad another ugly, like San Francisco's got it pretty rough in the summer right. box. Right, office, yeah, man, with San Andreas and then this one destroying the Golden Gate Bridge. I guess that never goes out of style. But, no, no. You know. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's it, it's a little disappointing. Although I will say, going back to one bueno, was um, in the beginning of the movie, you spend a little bit of time in the future. And one point in particular, there's an assault by the humans on... Um, Cyberdyne in the future, which we've never seen in any of the movies, and that was cool. Looked a lot better than, you know, when James Cameron first did it in The Terminator, and it was dystopian and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was still cool, and... but it was just little bits. It was the, it was, it was just the, the humans Flashbacks. running away and stuff, but this one was, you saw the humans mount an offensive, and you saw all these choppers coming in, and it was like really an, an attack on... Um, I can't think of it. I keep saying Cyberdyne. It's, it's yeah. called something else though, right? Skynet, right? Skynet. There you go. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of Skynet. So that was really cool. The fact that, that they assaulted Skynet at the beginning and then, but it's so weird. They, they seem to like win in the future, but then they have to go back and do all the past stuff anyway. More convoluted and just, you know, <sighs> alternate timelines and no explanation. That's and, kind of ugly too. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. What you said about how they just willfully ignored a huge plot thing as to why Arnold went back when Sarah was seven, yeah. or, or nine rather, for the first time, instead of when she back. was like in the 20s. No, I was no holding one, out hope for some explanation and it never happened. Never came. I'm like, wow, that's just sort of a really big hole to leave unfilled for a movie that's going to be this big. Truly. Um, uh, but, um, I yeah. One more fail is yeah. the fact that they've made these movies PG-13, more family friendly, cut back on the gore, the swearing, and it just feels like a money grab to me, you well, know? And it obviously backfired because in that, you almost alienate the hardcore fans who want it R and really just more more akin to the first two films. Yeah. And then, you know, the kids are... You they're know, just they, always trying to grab the biggest audience. What they're not yeah. thinking about is that Terminator has enough goodwill going for it, despite the last two movies, that people will go see an R-rated Terminator movie yeah. and most likely enjoy it more. Rise of the Machines, despite its, uh, you know, shortcomings, I guess, still made a lot more money than this one. Well, yeah, but that was still, everyone that was, was still gung-ho, and yeah. that was the, I mean, that was the first one post-T2, so everyone was like, ooh, what are we going to get this time? Yeah, and the first now one we've had post two Cameron disappointments too, so. since T2. Please come back, so, James Cameron. Uh, Please come back and save and this franchise. And that's another weird thing. Can I just say, like, why, why did James Cameron say this is the natural third movie? I agree that it's more natural than T3 and and Salvation story-wise, but still, I, I mean, but he, is he getting a cut of it somehow? Is he an executive, executive producer? producer, maybe, or uh, something? But still, like, yeah. I, you wouldn't think I mean, that he would say that unless he'd really, created. yeah, I don't know. So. It's, it's just, and, and you know, I don't know if I pinpointed a, uh, a fail other than, I mean, one of the Malos, like I said, they gave away, like, uh, Arnold's line gives away what's going to happen at the end, and yeah. so the big reveal at the end, um, you know, post-conflict is like not, I'm like, oh yeah, well, duh. Because we knew that was going to happen. We knew, yeah. uh, you know, they're trying to make sure that the franchise can continue from this point on. And it's like... And now we're not even sure if it's going to. If it's to going to, no. It's so poorly at the box office. I guess it's still making money overseas, they're saying. And so maybe it'll have a Pacific Rim effect where it can make enough overseas where they'll say, okay, let's green light a sequel. And... Hope for better marketing or something. I guess, I uh, or, or or less marketing for God's sake, because <laughs> that case. was their problem in this one. And those were the nods that did yeah. actually kind of save the film for me. Was the fact that Arnold came back, did a very entertaining job, and the fact that you know certain little like winks at the audience were cool. Yeah, absolutely. You know? But but then there's a lot else that they forgot to mention and explain. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's a that's a good way to wrap it up and say uh, gracias for tuning in. But uh, more importantly, we actually want to make mention of our horror endeavor together, my friend. So yes. I'm going to let Cecil take that one away. Absolutely. As you can see, we have our horror show. It's uh, youtube.com slash the horror show or the horror show channel dot... 
wait, I'm sorry, youtube.com slash the horror show channel or the horror show channel.com. We do uh, horror movie reviews, how to's, comedy sketches, celebrity interviews. Um, we just recorded our first tabletop session yeah, of a game called Dyson Stein. We're going to be releasing that soon. We do trailer reactions all the time, as I mentioned. We're going to be releasing our Attack on Titan trailer by the time this goes up. You can probably go check it out. And then Jaime and I do our horror news about yeah. every every other Monday. So yes. try to stay informative, scary informative. Exactly, facts. exactly. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, check it out, you guys. It's uh, it's good fun and it's a good little companion to Enfuegotainment. Exactly right. And uh, you can find me on all social media sectors at Jaime Enfuego, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Simple as that. So once again, I thank you, peeps, for listening to us rant about the positives and the negatives, and you know a little bit of uh, in between about Terminator Genesis. And until we get to speak with all of you about cinema again soon. Adios, guys.